All right, continuing our series on learning Roll20 and setting up an adventure. In the last video, we imported a, a battle map. It was a forest, and um, we made sure that it was on the map layer, that it had a grid overlaying it, that we were happy with the scale. And then as a little bonus, we went ahead and added uh, some secret dynamic lighting areas that the players could not see which would give us a place to put monsters and assets and other stuff that we wanted to have easy access to without the players being able to see it. And it also introduced us to dynamic lighting a little bit. So now we've got to populate it. In this encounter, the players are tracking down a group of goblins that have kidnapped a little boy. So of course they're going to be poking around, looking for clues, um, survival checks, investigation, all that jazz. Um, as they are making their way around the scene, they will eventually trigger uh, the encounter, which is a wild boar or a group of wild boars that come out and attack them. Now, wild boar are, they have the potential to like one shot um, a character. I don't mean like take them to like zero, I mean actually overkill them. Um, so, uh, Use with caution. Uh, you could use as many boars as you think your players could handle. I would recommend starting with one boar. If they smoke it in the first round, bring out, you know, maybe the boar's mate shows up. Um, but if uh, if you have a bunch of squishies that don't have a lot of hit points, there isn't like a beefy boy that could take the hit up front or a, like a level one forge cleric with an armor class of 21 or something. I would definitely recommend having the boar start far away from the party. Uh, and waste its first round charging, um, because, man, you will seriously kill somebody if you're not careful. Anyways, back to the Roll20 tutorial. Um, we need a boar. Where's the boar at? All right, we've got three... Well, we got three ways that we could do this. Uh, the first one is money. Uh, if you buy the monster manual, it's this simple. You go to the um, compendium, you type in a boar, it brings up uh, all the monsters that are in your compendium. Of course, these monsters are unlocked with the power of money. Um, I think the monster manual is like $30. I know you've already purchased it on D&D Beyond. You already purchased the physical book. You're not going to purchase it again, damn it. But if you do, it's as easy as going here, grabbing the giant boar, dragging it over, and now I have a giant boar. Uh, the token's already built. Um, it has macros for all of its attacks. Um, I could track its hit points really easily. Everything's just there. So I could be like, hey, use a tusk attack. There you go. Uh, yeah, you, this is what I mean about how it could instantly kill a first level character. Uh, especially if it had a charge on top of that with an extra 2d6. Oh my goodness. So um, it's that simple. Um, if you buy the monster manual and you need boars, I could now just drag out, look, it adds it over here. Just drag as many boars as I want. Boars, boars, boars for days. It's that simple. Um, so that's the absolute simplest way to do it. What's the other way to do it? Um, the other way is, um, to roll dice. So what I mean by that is very similar to the analog world where you throw a miniature on the table and you check its stats on the stat sheet that you printed out from D&D Beyond or the, the page that you um, put a posty note on in your monster manual. You would refer to those sources for the stats and you would just use Roll20 as a literal virtual tabletop. You would have a miniature and you would use the dice roller. So let me show you how that works. Uh, earlier video, we talked about the token tool and building a token, uh, or at least I told you where you could go get it to build a token. So same deal. Uh, I'm going to assume that you went and built yourself a boar token. So here we go. I'm going to bring out the boar token I made. This is a large creature, so I'm going to scale it up. There we go. Uh, to scale it, of course, I use the little blue boxes that are around it. All right. Uh, maybe you just, you want the adventure to be over quick, so you send out this boar amazing um all right so we'll make it a large there we go so we have a boar uh what do we need now if i'm running the boar and it doesn't have a roll 20 character sheet and i have the stats for it printed out or you know on my phone or my ipad or another screen on my computer whatever wherever you're referencing the boar stats from i don't have them memorized i kind of have them memorized whatever um well we'll make it work so 
the boar is going to attack uh, Chamomile. So it's going to come out of hiding. It, we roll it into initiative, it's going to attack. Because it doesn't have a character sheet, I have to do all that stuff manually. That's totally fine. So uh, it's going to rush Chamomile and attack. Uh, so, you know, it can't reach her, so it'll have to dash. That'll be the end of its turn. Now, maybe I really, I don't know, don't care about Chamomile's life, so I make it spawn on the map, and it runs up, and it attacks her. What's the dice roller do? So I'm going to mouse over my tools and go to the d20. And this is a really cool um, tool. It allows you to sort of quickly um, grab a certain number of dice and roll them. Let me give you an example. Uh, I, I need to take three six fall damage. I mouse over the three next to the d6. It just automatically rolls it and adds it for me. Pretty cool. Um, since I'm going to constantly need this thing to roll for the boar, I'm going to want it to be readily accessible. So I'm actually going to go down to the bottom where it says advanced dice roller. And, oh man, this is pretty big, right? It takes up a lot of room on your screen. So you can minimize this by clicking the word dice roller or near the word dice roller twice. And it will shrink it down. And then when you're ready to open it again, you click it twice and it opens it up again. Way easier than having to go to the left, mouse, uh, you know, mouse over until you find it, click on it, open it. This way we could just open it, toss it aside, open it, toss it aside. Uh, so while it's open, the boar runs up, it attacks Gamma Mile. Uh, I check the stats, it rolls a d20 plus 5. I roll it. I say, Gamma Mile, a 19, that's going to hit your armor class. Uh, she starts crying because she knows how much damage she's about to take. Uh, I'm like, it uh, It gets to add 2d6 to its already 2d6 damage from the charge. So there's 4d6. Uh, I believe it has a plus a 3 bonus to its uh, attack. And of course, you'll have your stats open to double check this. Yeah, there we go. And then I hit roll. And Chamomile takes 14 points of damage. She sighs a, br a breath of relief because she wasn't instantly killed by massive damage. I rolled two ones. Uh, so she falls down, and we've done our we've done our service. There you go. No need to build a complicated uh, character sheet for a boar that is only going to see maybe 30 minutes of action ever. Um, if you are trying to build your own roster of uh, tokens that you could like summon the boar later or use the boar later, you might want to build your own monster mini. I am going to tell you that if you plan to build monster minis, you might as well just spend the $30 and buy the monster manual because what I'm about to show you is super tedious. Uh, but let's do it anyways. All right. So... Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to open Giant Boar in another window to simulate you guys having a copy of the monster stats uh, that you need. This would be an easier process if you had a digital version like D&D Beyond to copy from or whatever. Uh, so we got our miniature. We're going to go to our journal. This is the third method, the most time-intensive one. We're going to go to the uh, journal. We're going to add, and we're going to add a new character. Uh, this character is going to be called a giant uh, boar. Uh, I don't think it can have the same name as the giant boar that's there. So I'll put giant boar. I made myself. All right. And we need to give it some avatar art. So we'll go back to our art tab and drag over the one that was made with the token tool. Uh, we could give it a tag if we want to. So this is a beast. There we go. And we're going to hit save. And then I go to the character sheets and I say, you are an NPC. And now I have to start filling it out. Uh, and who doesn't like filling out forms? Uh, so its name is Giant Boar. It is a large uh, beast. It's got an armor class of 12. Uh, it's got 42 hit points. That gets 5d10 plus 15 uh, for its formula. Uh, it's got a speed of 40. It's got a strength of 17. 10 dex. 16 con. 2 intelligence. 7, 5, and so on and so forth, right? 
Um, it doesn't have any skills, uh, so that's cool. It doesn't have any uh, vulnerabilities, resistances, immunities, conditions, um, senses. It does have a perception. Uh, get this uh, nonsense. A perception of eight. Um, so pretty easy to sneak past it. Uh, let's see. It doesn't know any languages. Its challenge rating is a two. And it automatically calculates that XP for you. Its token size uh, is a 2, right? Because it's 2 by 2. So we're going to change that to a 2. Uh, this boar, thankfully, is not a spellcaster. Does that have any reactions? Um, all this other stuff is determined by our server settings. So we don't need to worry about that. Uh, to close all these options, we hit the little gear in the top right. So we've started building out the boar. Now the boar has two special abilities. Uh, charge and Relentless. So, if we are copying from uh, our real-life monster manual, get ready to do a lot of typing. If you are copying from D&D uh, &D Beyond or some other online resource, uh, you can simply copy and paste. Uh, there you go. Now, the benefit here is that we can do some neat stuff like uh, go in and change this out to automatically roll that extra slash damage by putting double brackets, square brackets around it. So that will automatically uh, make 2d6 roll, which is kind of cool. But you can also do that to the paid version. So I'm still going to say the paid version's a better deal. I mean, how much is your time worth, I guess? That's the big question. Uh, you agreed to DM, so I, I mean, you must have some kind of free time. Uh, right? So uh, the next ability is Relentless. And what Relentless does is it basically allows it to fight on even after it would have died, which is pretty cool. And then finally, we need to add its attack. So fortunately, this monster only has one, so we're going to go to the plus to add a new attack. Uh, this is the Tusk. And we're going to check the attack box. It will suggest melee, and it is not wrong. Uh, it only has a five foot reach. Uh, it's to hit bonus is a five. It can only attack one target. On a hit, it does 2d6 uh, plus 3 damage. What kind of damage? Uh, I believe it is slashing damage. And is there any other special effect there? You would add it here. Um, there is none. Boom. You have just built a giant pour I made myself. Uh, so... We could even go further and link up the token if we wanted to. So I can go to the token now. And I can select Giant Boar I made myself. And uh, I know that its hit points are 42. So for the green bar, I could put 42 out of 42. And then for armor class, I could tell it to link to NPC armor. Uh, the boar doesn't have any special senses, but it can see. So I could check that. And then I could go to edit and register the token. Boom. So now, if I wanted to, I could go here and drag out Bore I Made Myself, and boom, it has hit points. I can, uh, you know, track the hit points on the miniature. If I hold down Alt and double click it, it will automatically open the character sheet. And I have macros for all my attacks. So I could use Tusk. I could use charge. I modified charge to automatically roll that extra damage every time I click it. Pretty cool stuff. So that is how you build a monster from scratch. Uh, how you can um, use the dice roller if you don't feel like building a monster. Or how you can just buy your way to an easy and successful life by just going and buying the monster manual. So those are the three different ways that you can get monsters for your maps. Uh, all right, I'll see you in the next video where we will actually talk about having a combat in Roll20.